welcome back to my film and TV channel where we're all staying safe and well. We're also Netflix today for a, an eagerly awaited uh, series, eight episode series. So we're going to have a look at that today, please. If you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications, everything. Film and TV, of course, reviews of series like this, film reviews, information, vlogs, the odd quiz thrown in from time to time. So please have a look around my channel and of course you will notice stuff on my football team Manchester City as well so if that's of any interest to you or anyone you know might be interested give them a kick in my direction I'd be very grateful and likes are always very much appreciated guys if you can I'm trying to get to double figures you get between four and six likes if you can get to ten I'll be a happy bunny and if you like free body problem uh, yeah I'll, I'll say I do like it. Uh, give me a like. And of course, if you like my feeble attempts uh, to sh give you some information, give me a like as well. That'd be wonderful. Yes, free body problem. That's the one we're talking about today. An American science fiction television series created by David Benioff Weiss and Alexander Wu. I, I think that's some connection with Game of Thrones, isn't it? It's a Game of Thrones team, this, but uh, set in more modern times and future times by the looks of it. And of course, based on the Chinese novel that was uh, an acquired taste but very popular, The Three Body Problem by Liu Sixen. I've pronounced, probably pronounced that totally wrong. As I said, eight episodes, uh, average about 60 minutes, up and, up and down, some, some less, some more. And it's the second live adaptation of the 2023 Chinese television series. It premiered on Netflix on March the 21st, so I don't know what the uh, first action was. You, you might know that yourself, but I've not been able to find out much about that one. I'm trying to concentrate on this one. What's it about? Well, Yuenji is an astrophysicist who saw her father brutally murdered during the Chinese Cultural Revolution in the 60s. Later, she was conscripted by the military because of her scientific background and sent to a secret radar base, probably where they made COVID as well, uh, in a remote region. Her fateful decision at the base echoes across space and time to a group of scientists in the present day, forcing them to face humanity's greatest threat. It's not an immediate threat. <laughs> It's, it's a, a few hundred years down the line, but uh, it's coming, it's coming. Uh, it stars oh, a, a massive cast, of course. The, the main, some, some of the main characters, Benedict Wong, Jess Hong, Jovan Adipo, Iiza Gonzalez, John Bradley and Alex Sharp and many, 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 many others. These scores and comments was at the 22nd of March 2024. It took me a couple of about 24 hours to catch up with this one. Rotten Tomatoes, a 75% approval rating. We don't have a big breakdown of that. That's 41 critics, so I don't know how many fresh, how many rotten, I've no idea. And the consensus says, tackling its ambitious source material with impressive gusto, Three Body Problems first season proves a solid start that should have left sci-fi fans eager for more. Yeah, I think that's a good good uh, combination of words. Solid start, I'd probably agree with that myself. Metacritic, give it seven out of 100 based on 36 critics 26 were positive nine were mixed and one was negative i won't name him i don't want to embarrass him john nugent though from empire magazine give it 80 out of 100 he likes it there's a few hundreds knocking around as well a hugely ambitious adaptation said john of a hugely ambitious book as an opening season it feels like set up for something bigger but what's here is thoroughly impressive giant scale television you know, uh, not all the time, John, not all the time. Internet Movie Database, Joe Public, what do they think? Well, four and a half thousand scores and reviews, so it's uh, totting up nicely. 7.4 out of 10, so all bodes well. I can't see it, I can't see it underscoring seven. It's got to be at least a seven out of 10, this, as it, as it moves along. Rotten Tomatoes audience, uh, they're just 60% positivity. So, yeah, so, well, uh, generally good. Generally good, if not overly fantastic and that brings you to my little thoughts on this guys i don't mind a good style i love a good sci-fi series of course game of thrones is one of my favorites even up to the last episodes which everyone whinges about i loved game of thrones and this though doesn't always grab your full attention and once bradley's character uh, of course uh, rooney plays uh, you can see the irony in that um 
once he leaves, it loses some of that a little bit of humour it's sort of found as well in a, in episodes two or three or something like that. And it's funny that Bradley was portrayed as a fan of God's own team, of course, Manchester City, when he himself is a United fan or, or a rag, as we like to call them, or we sometimes call them. Well, he wasn't nice about us in an interview in a magazine I read, so I'll repay the favour. Yes, uh, we think you're scum as well. That's what he called us. But he laughed, eh? We can have a laugh about it, can't we? Anyway... Apart from that, apart from Mr. Bradley, it's, it is a nice mix of sci-fi through a little bit of time travel, if you like, or sort of time travel. Uh, as you take a, a sort of game comes into it as well, which is uh, sort of changes the slant a little bit, which is nice. There's a handful, I'd say, of very good scenes with OK characters that, yeah, I mean, after one series, none of them have really grown on me. None of them, if they popped it, to, popped it in episode one of series two, would bother me that much in fairness uh, I've not really invested that much in them uh, there's a lot of lot of words in this a lot of chat as well so you've got to like the people as well so yeah not overly impressed but of course uh, the story with 400 years to run uh, no spoiler alert here uh, did achieve the aim of pulling us in certainly back for the next season I don't know how many years hence we're going to go and of course the books do travel in time as well so perhaps that's why we're not sort of have it been uh, sort of uh, forced to invest in characters perhaps they're not going to hang around too long I don't know I have no idea what the plans are it's science fiction of course so not everything is crystal clear some of the conclusions they make you think all right okay I believe you uh, and playing as I said playing the game element was an okay diversion from the, the routine stuff and the Santi, <laughs> who were the baddies, uh, just reminds me of Doctor Who, actually. The Santi, the Santi, uh, a Doctor Who adversary, of course. Uh, so perhaps the Doctor will get involved as well in the later series. Why not? Why not these MCUs and stuff have these crossover things? Why can't Doctor Who come into this? Uh, hey, why, you know, obviously copyright when he was writing the books, but uh, yeah, why not? Why not? It sounds good to me. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it could be sorted for the modern version. There's a lot say there's a lot of chatter in this, there's a lot of verbal diarrhea at times that, that do slow it down. So as I say, certainly if you're not invested fully in the characters as well. So for me, not a total eight episodes, not a total uh, love fest for me. A bit bitty at times. Some truly good stuff, and uh, a lot of well, well, not so good, not good, not so good stuff. And I say the uh, certainly, certainly uh, episode by series one of Game of Thrones. I was thoroughly enthralled. Am I thoroughly enthralled in this? Probably not, but. Uh, you know, it's a it's a format for a different time. It's set in the future. Perhaps it doesn't have that feel to it. But uh, I do look forward to a, a second series, but not quite with bated breath. But I'm not going to roll my breath. Put it that way, and uh, I'm not exactly on the edge of my seat. So, but it was okay. Uh, solid, solid, as someone said, didn't it? So, yeah, I would be fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. I'd be positive on Metacritic, and I, but I'm not going to go as high as seven. I can't, I can't. I just think it's a watch. It's watchable so far with some very good bits. So I'll just give it a basic six out of ten for me. I don't think I can give that any more for season one. And uh, yeah, that's a look forward to season two. But as I say, I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Uh, you know, if it suddenly was cancelled, it wouldn't particularly bother me. It's just a horrible thing to say. Anyway, let me know what you think, guys. Great to hear from you. Till we meet again. That's one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.